So this patient has pseudo-exfoliation, although dilates fairly well for pseudo-X. You can see the little linear opacity on the anterior surface of the crystalline lens there, the cataract. And has a big, obvious posterior subcapsular lens opacity. So we're making our 2.4 clear corneal incision. We just made the side port incision with the eye knife. A couple of things. One, some of these patients have a low endothelial cell count, so you may want to do an ECC pre-op. Two, the zonia may be weak during the procedure, obviously. You may need to use your tractors. If you stain the anterior capsule, you can see the capsule, and at any point during the procedure, easier to place retractors. So I like to stain eyes with Pseudo-X. Of course, with a lens opacity like this, it'll make it easier to see the uh, capsular excess too. But there's this, that second reason. See the capsular excess margins during the procedure in case you need to put in capsule retractors. Okay, so next let's see what we think about the zonule during the rexus. So far, I don't see any sign of any significant zonular weakness. Now with a big lens and a stretched capsule, you may not see any, even if there is a weak zonule. So it's nice to see no stria as you do the rexus. Doesn't mean you're out of the woods. Flat 23 gauge cannula, lift up capsule, inject. Same thing on the other side, depress the nucleus, okay. So we want a zonule friendly technique. We always want a zonule friendly technique, but we especially want one in eyes with pseudo X or, uh, or any eye that might have a lax zonule. So here I'm injecting the viscoat 360 degrees under the capsule, creating the what I like to call a nuclear sandwich. And that acts to keep the capsular fornix in position. And just as viscoat acts to keep a pupil enlarged, simply because it's not easily aspirated. And let me just adjust the sleeve, get better infusion. Okay, so keeping the nucleus centered. That's good to avoid zonular stress. And I'm keeping it centered by holding it still with the curved McCool big ball chopper, which I've inserted out over the equator. Sculpting down till I get a red reflex. It's a pretty large nucleus tell by the, the steepness of the phaco tip. So now that I've got a good red reflex, I can chop, and I'm not gonna separate widely the instruments. I really don't wanna stress the zonule quadrant, but I do wanna remove this that nuclear segment that I just created there. Okay, so now I'm gonna chop some more here. Now one of the things I am noticing in this eye is that the nucleus tends to be a little bit retro displaced from the capsule. So does that mean the zonules lax? Maybe. I'm gonna see if I can get over here and chop upward on this side. And I call that a back crack. And sometimes I'll just do back cracks. They're a little tricky to do, but one thing I like about them is you don't have to rotate the nucleus to do it. Okay, so now I want to see how this nucleus rotates because I'm interested in the zonular status. So I'm going to go to Sculpt. And I'm going to, you know, bilateral rotation when I release it, see how it goes back to where it came from? Hmm. Now I impaled it and rotated it. 
So that's a little carousel kind of maneuver. And we're still on sculpt, so I'm now going to impale this nucleus and chop it. Again, these are just maneuvers designed to keep the zonule happy. What, the cornea? So I'm sculpting more in the center here because that's going to make it easier for me to separate the remaining nuclear segments. You can see that they just separated there. And I have the hemi-nucleus here still left, but I'm still not happy over on this area with the apparent depression of the capsule. So I'm going to put in a capsule retractors here. So when I came out, the, the anterior capsule has come forward, but when I increase pressure in the anterior chamber, it wants to go backward. So I'm going to fill the capsule or sac. Now remember our discussion earlier about we can see the rexus if we stain it. Well, here we go. I can see that rexus because it's stained. Otherwise, I might be having some trouble because there's no red reflex there. So I'm going to be using uh, MST retractors here. And I use those by making a, a, a vertical puncture. And then I'll enlarge it a little bit. Yeah, She felt that a little bit. So I'm going to use alkane cotton tip applicators and just put a little more uh, local or topical anesthetic right where I need it. So this is just topical anesthetic on cotton tip applicators, soak them. I'm just holding it in the locations where I'll probably wind up putting in capsule retractors or possibly wind up putting them in. Now, I had to go through the conjunctiva superiorly because it's overgrown the limbus, as it so often does. And I, when I came out with the side port blade, I made that opening a little bit larger so I can get through the conjunctiva with the retractors. So these are the MST retractors. And there are basically two types of capsule retractors available. Um, the McCool Cataract Support System retractors and these retractors. And um, I actually have a proprietary interest in both. Both were off, uh, designed off of my patents. Okay, so um, I'm using the broader based MST one here. So the idea here is not to retract the capsule, but just to approximate it with the edge of the retractor. What, the cornea? Good. And, and the capsule goes, you can just barely see it there, right through the retractor. But it's the tip of the retractor and the capsule of fornix that's really doing the, the heavy lifting. That's the thing that's really giving us the uh, support. And now I'm going to put one here and then possibly one here. So I'll take the side port blade. And when we're done, we'll be injecting a capsule attention ring. My feeling is anytime I'm uh, concerned enough about the zonule to use these retractors, I'm going to use a capsule attention ring. So here's our second retractor. And this is a little bit of a tighter fit than the other one, but I think it's going to go. Yep, there we go. I'm going to just massage it a little bit here on the top, get it to pop in. Now, can I have the... Um, I came in. I was going to use a hook and pull it in, but I don't need to because we got it in there. Good. So here's our side port incision. I could put a third one right here, and I'm, I'm really going to. Um, 
it may be more than I need, but better more than less. This is again through the conjunctiva. You can see that since I use the topical anesthetic, or I can see certainly, uh, the patient is not feeling these uh, punctures and insertions. And wet cornea. Now we're going to line this up, slip it past the rexus, hug the uh, nucleus so we know we catch the rexus. You can see when you pull on it the little movement of the lens. So, you, I mean, you, you know you're there. Okay, now, I don't know yet if I need one on the other side for a little counter traction. In fact, you know what, I'm going to put one on the other side just to be sure. I've got one, no reason not to. And also when I insert the CTR, that'll be protective to the zonule. So here is our opposing, if you will, capsule retractor. So for the rest of the procedure, can think of these retractors as the zonule. And boy, they are sturdy. So we're good to go. We'll do some more fake on now. It's generally easy to rotate the nucleus. We'll see if that holds true here. What the cornea? Why well, may sculpt a little more in the center? Good. Yeah, let's go right here. That's the Y suture. Good. With the retractors in place, it's generally easier to rotate a nucleus because the retractors hold that capsule steady. What the cornea again? Dries out fairly rapidly. So that with the capsule held steady, and this is very deep. I mean, I'm working very far down in, in the eye. Um, with the capsule held steady, then you can rotate the nucleus. Let's go quadrant removal. So we'll now proceed to remove the segments. My message regarding capsule retractors. Use them before, not after. When do you think you should use them? Well, the first time you think, wonder if I need them. Um, better to put them in then, than to wait and say, gee, I should have used those things. I like to say it's kind of like appendectomies. There's a certain percent of the time when those are done, and in retrospect, you didn't need them to do it. Well, it's a lot better than having retrospect be, darn, I should have done one, for obvious reasons. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing in 3D that you can't tell. First, the capsule here is more elevated than the posterior capsule than here, okay? So there's an asymmetry and the capsule is just coming up. Over here, look at that. No zonule at all, none, right? So we're gonna put some OVD in here and then we'll put another retractor here. We may get VIT that comes through this no zonular region and if so, we'll do a vitrectomy and clear it up at some point during the procedure. But I think there's VIT bulging right along there if we look very carefully. See that little line? I think that's probably highlight. Okay, so we're gonna put some viscoat right into that spot. So I'm going first down in the capsule or bag. Then 
I'm going to come up and push that apparent vitreous back and back down in the bag then back to the area of the sulcus sort of alternating that so now I've got a anatomically restored segment here take the side port blade and we'll put in another you might say gee how many of these retractors can you put in my record seven in eyes that have had literally no zonule I don't see that we're going to need more than these five right now but who knows and by the way pretty good thing I put in this other one even when we didn't have any visual evidence that we needed it it probably kept this bag in place even as this area without any zonule at all came forward so we can kind of look back on this video and say gee you know what that capsule rexus that was so uneventful really didn't tell us the status of the zonule did it no it didn't for the reasons that we talked about so now we'll finish cortex removal and then we'll put in the CTR and the IOL yeah a little pressure patients will often feel the IOP setting is 70 and that's not very high but patients with a lax zonial the posterior capsule goes back more they may feel some pulling on the remaining zonial area more than they would feel if they had all their zonules in other words the localized force on just a few zonules to ciliary processes the other possibility is that she has thin sclera and has poor ocular rigidity and the stretching of the sclera is what she feels but regardless all right so cortex is gone there's no vitreous around here I can tell you but I still think that was prolapsing hyaloid there and we're going to put in the capsule attention ring and there's the capsule attention ring with viscode on it and I'm going to pick it up the viscose on it or any hyaluronic acid or OVD to hold it still while you pick it up so it doesn't fly away then I'm going to draw it into the capsule attention ring injector as, as uh, you just saw what the cornea I'm going to inject it now the retractors will hold the capsule in place I want to start it where there are no uh, retractors sort of in between them but you can see the capsule doesn't shift or move and that's really because of the retractors and then I can just release it like so the reason I started in between them is I didn't want the edge of the CTR to go into one of the loops of the uh, retractors that would be an event that could cause you a little trouble okay so now we're going to inject the IOL right into the capsule sac and we want to leave the IOL horizontal okay next step what do you do do you irrigate out the OVD do you use INA do you take out the retractors what in my opinion is to take out the retractors because if I take out the, first of all I don't like to go in with the INA tip on these eyes most of the time because then when I come out they shallow or it could prolapse whatever so I want to irrigate the uh, OVD out of the anterior chamber when I'm done with that I'll probably put a meiotic in such as um, myostat and the reason I'm going to do that is there's going to be elevated intraocular pressure as a good possibility because I'm, I'm not going to remove all the OVD I'm certainly not going to go out in the sulcus where I push the vitreous back and go remove that OVD uh, that would be um, unwise I think so we'll just do some irrigation of OVD but leaving it where we need it to remain and we'll use the uh, 
meiotic agent to reduce the chances of uh, IOP spike. And we'll watch the IOP post-op too. Okay, syringe with BSS. And I'm going down into the bag because a few little cortical things there. And then I'm going to irrigate in the angle because I'd like to get OVD out of the angle. And there's also very commonly little lens fragments near your corneal punctures. So we use a, a few syringes. These are just standard syringes, 3cc syringes, which with a 27 gauge cannulas on them. And probably one more syringe and then I think we'll be ready for our, I'm doing a little stromal hydration here, um, for our um, meiotic. Now, might there be pseudophagodenesis when we're finished? There might be. And will it persist? Probably not. And if it did, you wait up four to six weeks minimum. And then, if necessary, you can go back and suture the CTR to the sclera. Okay. Well, I think we're ready for the myostat now. Now I'm watching to see if the pupil comes down and I'm watching the edge of the optic and you know, the myostat may not cause the pupil to come down. The IOL is a little tilted, uh, I'm not surprised, but I don't think it'll stay that way. Um, I'm just adjusting its position. There's a little more cortex there. Let's see if I can dry aspirate that for a second here. Now I'm going to irrigate that out. The chamber is moderately shallow. Now the chamber is deep again. You know, and get those little particles to flow out. You just depress the incision to make that happen. Okay, so now we're ready, essentially to test these incisions, make sure that all the little punctures aren't leaking. And then we'll watch your intraocular pressure post-op and see how that does. So the primary incisions are dry. The side port still has a little leak and none of the other incisions are showing any sign of leakage. So let's do a little more stromal hydration right here and then we'll be done. Uh, this side port incision is probably sealing as we speak. You can see the red cells were sitting on it and not moving anywhere. But uh, I'm going to hydrate it just a little bit more anyway. Good. IOP is probably in the 20s. I'm going to just one more time just slightly depress the lens there. Good. Yeah. Okay, we're done. But again, I'm going to emphasize here, we know we've got OVD left there. You can see some in the center. And we'll look to see if there's any pseudophagodenesis here. But with OVD around it, that may be sort of tamponading that. Watch the IOP post-op. Treat it as you need to. Good.